recently been doing on re-examining archaeomagnetic data from the UK and how we've put this into GeoMagia. And I've only been involved in a very small part of this project, really, just at the end stage. This is a project really run by Catherine Bath and her colleagues at the University of Bradford and people at English Heritage, now Historic England, um, in the UK. Um, and the main point of their project was to compile all archaeomagnetic data from the UK um, to re-examine ages, especially the older archaeomagnetic ages, so that we could make an improved archaeomagnetic dating curve for the UK. And uh, on the here you can see the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland and Ireland is here as well. And this is the all of the sites now that we have from the UK. So we have quite a good data distribution, but I'm going to come back to that um, a bit later on. So I'm going to start with just going through what GeoMagia is. So uh, GeoMagia is an online database for paleomagnetic data from archaeological materials, volcanic rocks, and more recently sediments, and these have to be from the past 50,000 years. Um, and it can be found at geomagia.gfz-potsdam.de. Um, I'll just give a brief history of the database. So it was initiated um, at the fifth Nordic Paleomagnetic Workshop in 2004 in Finland. And it was really the project of uh, Fabio Donadini, who was a PhD student at the time. And he's put an incredible amount of work into developing this database. And you'll see that pretty much all of the data that is in the archaeomagnetic and volcanic part of the database was entered by Fabio. But in the first version of the database, it really just included absolute paleo intensity data from archaeological rocks, uh, archaeological artifacts and volcanic rocks. Um, and there was only really directions associated uh, with these paleo intensity results. There was no directions just on their own. And the first version of the database was just 159 uh, studies there. But then this database was updated, version two, this is around 2008 and 2009, and now uh, directional only studies were included. And this brought the number of studies to about 372. And more recently, uh, we were working on version three, and this is where I became involved in the project. And we extend, extended the uh, number of archaeo and volcanic metadata fields. Uh, and the number of data as well. So we had 461 studies, uh, around about 4,000 declination entries, about 5,500 inclinations, and about 5,000 paleo intensity. And we also developed a new database for sediments from the last 50,000 years. And we had a couple of papers out in 2015 in EPS. Um, I'd like to also mention that the earlier version of the database was hosted at UCSD here um, as well for a number of years before being transferred to GFZ Potsdam. Uh, so, okay. I, I, and I just want to um, oops, show you uh, just a quick search that you can do with GeoMagia. Oh, could you help me, Nick, here? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thanks Nick. Um, so this is uh, the homepage for GeoMagia. Um, and if you want to use the Archaeomagnetic database, you just click on the link here. And we could choose uh, a location. And I'm going to put in Iceland, because that's where I live now. And um, we can retrieve data pretty quickly from the database. It should only really take a few seconds, I hope. And you'll see that we return 69 matches here. And we have ages, we have in data about intensity and directions, information about where the samples came from, the locations. And this is all available to download um, with, with a, from, in a spreadsheet. So it's pretty rapid to return the data that you want from a region. Okay. 
But in this talk, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, archaeomagnetism in the UK and the developments we've made uh, with compiling a new data set. So archaeomagnetism in the UK has a long history, uh, starting back in 1958 with the compilation of Cook and Belcher. Um, and then that was, was followed by a lot of work by Martin Aitken and his group through the late 50s and the early 1960s. And in the figure here, we can see one of the earlier inclination and declination curves um, from Aitken's group. And we're, they already had quite a bit of data here tracing out variations over the past um, 2,000 years. Um, but it's been quite common uh, in archaeomagnetic dating, uh, especially in the UK, to use what's called a barrel plot, which is really just inclination and declination. And you can see the, the, the variation, sorry, the variations through time um, in inclination and declination. And this is just a hand-drawn curve. There's no, no maths went into developing that. They just drew a curve there. And all of this data is relocated to London. But from, from that point on, data was relocated to Meriden. So all the, most of the curves that you're going to see, um, from wherever the data is from, it's uh, relocated to Meriden. So Meriden is a town, a small village, really, in the centre of, of England. Uh, between Birmingham and Coventry, and it has this very nice 500-year-old sandstone cross sitting in the village square there. So keep that in mind when we're relocating data. Okay. But then after the work of Aitken, uh, we have to go to 1988 for the next significant compilation. And that included 92 directions from 69 locations within the UK. And the primary purpose of this study was to develop archaeomagnetic dating curves. And again, this was a hand-drawn curve, but it was also informed by paleosecular variation results from the sediments of Loch Lomond, uh, from Gillian Turner, who's here in the audience, and, and Roy Thompson back in 1981. And you can see the two bow plots they have here, which they split up from 1000 BC to 600 AD, and then from 600 AD to 1975. And these have really been used as the primary dating curves from, for the UK ever since. But then the next study that came along, that's uh, the work of the Bradford group of uh, Zanonieri et al. And that was in 2007. And you can see that we have significantly more data in this compilation. We have about 620 directions from about 250 locations. And the time has been extended back to 2000 BC. And this is uh, the data we have here in the triangles. And then in the curves, we have a, a PSV curves calculated using a Bayesian approach from Lanos um, and others. And they calculated 95% uh, uncertainty estimates. And that, that's the envelope that we have here. Um, but we can still see that there is times uh, where there is poor coverage in data, perhaps here, but then certainly as we get to old and times there. And we can compare the Clark and the Zanineri curves, and we can see there's quite a bit of difference between those curves. We have quite high amplitude variations mm -hmm. in the Clark version <laughs> of the curve, and some of that is reduced in the Zanineri curve. So, more recently, there's been a new initiative um, by the Bradford Group in the UK, along with English Heritage, led, led by Kathy Bat, employed following Zoe Outram, uh, Sarah Jane Pelland and Paul Linford at English Heritage. Um, and this project is called the Magne Magnetic Moments in the Past Database. And one aspect of this was to focus on some periods where the dating wasn't very good. So in the British Iron Age, about 700 BC to AD 43, and reevaluate these ages with new radiocarbon dates and um, other evidence that could be used to provide new ages for these older archaeological samples. And this really was the work of uh, Sarah Jane Perlin. Um, and they revised 230 ages uh, with associated directions from 98 sites. But uh, I contacted uh, Kathy Bat recently, and uh, we decided that we wanted to try and get all of that data into GeoMagia. And so where do, where do these data come from? So, of course, we have peer-reviewed publications, 
and we have PhD theses, but also we have a lot of reports from consultancy. So uh, people have an archaeological site, they collect their samples and they want to know the age, so they'll contact various uh, companies which will do the archaeomagnetic processing and give them an age from their dating curve, for most likely from the Clark et al. dating curve. So we have a lot of those kind of reports. There was, of course, the IAGA database, um, which was run out of Plymouth by Don Carlin. And then there's also other English Heritage Lab reports. So all of the, these sources have been collated to form this new magnetic moments in the past database. Okay, <clears throat> so we have this new database from, yeah, from uh, the magnetic moments, but we also had quite a bit of data in geomagy already. So we decided that we would cross-check all of the UK entries uh, in geomagy with those that are in the magnetic moments in the past database. And we now include all of the data from the Zanineri compilation, which weren't previously included. And we cross-checked 448 entries um, that were available in the July 2015 version of Geomagy. And we primarily checked the direction alpha 95, ages, uncertainties, um, materials, location names, etc. Um, we found that there were 26 entries that were duplicates, and we, uh, so we removed them. That left us with 422. Um, and in this uh, graph here, we can see the number of changes to the other parameters. So we corrected 145 ages, 207 latitudes and longitudes, uh, 29 declinations, 60 inclinations, and 20 alpha 95s. But, but importantly, we added 487 new data that were in the magnetic moments database into Geomagia 50, and now we'll, we will have 909 uh, pairs of declination and inclination in Geomagia 50. So, uh, I would just like to concentrate a little bit on the age revision because uh, age control is so important when we're trying to uh, do archaeomagnetic dating or, to, or even to develop um, geomagnetic field models. Um, and so, we updated 145 ages or their uncertainty, and 65% of these uh, we revised by less than 100 years. But about 8% were revised by 500 years or more. So they're pretty significant revisions in the age. And these are mostly from the older data that we had. And, but it's worth pointing out that a lot of the age revisions uh, didn't make the uncertainties better. The uncertainties often got larger. Um, and that didn't, doesn't necessarily make people who want to date their materials that happy but uh, they're probably much more representative uncertainties than what, what were previously in the database. Okay, um, so in these two uh, maps, I'm comparing the data that were in Clark and Zanineri with the data that were, are now in uh, the Magnetic Moments database and in Geoma Geo 50. Um, and you can see that most of the data in both compilations is from, from England. We have very sparse data from Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland, and Ireland. Um, but yes, we've gone up significantly with the number of sites, from 69 Clark to 250 in Zanineri, and now we have 440 uh, in our most recent database. And if we just look at the distribution of the data in regards to, for example, the time, uh, we can see that we have various peaks in the number of data with the age. Um, and this occurs because a lot of the dates are archaeological, so they're assigned a period, for example, Roman age or medieval age, uh, and so we get these spikes around these different periods. And, and I've just marked on the British Iron Age here because this is the period where most of the new dates were from. But we can see that the majority of age uncertainties uh, are between 0 and 500, and we don't really have that many age uncertainties greater than 500. If we look at the directional uncertainty uh, represented by alpha 95, we have a mean uncertainty around about 4.2 degrees, a median around about three. So they're uh, on the whole very well constrained directions from the UK. Some of the data didn't have um, alpha 95s. And if we look at the type of materials that we use, we're 
it's mostly heated materials. So ovens, hearths, kilns, baked clays. Some of the results uh, came from mixed archaeological objects. So this may be a combination of tiles, ceramics, etc. There are a few unbaked sediments, and these have the highest alkalinity flow. Uh, VS, that's vitrified stone. So there's some old vitrified stone forts, for example, in Scotland. Um, if we have a look at the distribution of inclination and declination, at the top is the results at the site, and, and then we have at Meriden, just to show that their correction to Meriden doesn't cause a huge difference in the distribution of either parameter, and that's mainly because uh, Meriden is quite central to where the majority of the data are, and the distances we're relocating aren't that large. Um, and here I've split up the data uh, between the data that was already in GeoMagia that we updated and the new data that came from the magnetic moments in the past database. And I've assigned the uh, uncertainties here and you can see it, it gets a bit messy when you do that. And some of these sites, uh, these for example will be from a sedent, have very large um, alpha 95s. But to make this a little clearer, I have zoomed in on the time scale and also I've reduced the scale for declination and inclination. And you can see it's a rather scattered distribution through time. And you can start to see that we have these groupings of directions that relate to these archaeological, archaeologically defined ages in these periods as well. Okay, but one main thing we wanted to do was to develop a new archaeomagnetic dating curve for the UK. As I mentioned before, the main curve that's been used has been from Clark et al, 1980, with nine, from 92 directions. So now we have 909 directions. And we've been working with Monica Quarter at GFZ Potsdam. And this is really uh, primarily the work of Monica that I'm going to show from now on, to create a new uh, temporally continuous global model, which is focused on the UK. So we've taken um, the global data set from GeoMagia 50 and we've replaced the UK data that was in there with the updated data and we've added the new data as well. And we've used the approaches that have been used in other arch type models and CALES type models, for example, um, Corte et al 2009 and the more recent arch 10K.1 uh, model uh, from Constable et al in 2000, oh, I've got the reference there wrong. That should be 2016. Um, but then for this modeling, we did weight the UK data so that it was four times greater than the non-UK data. Um, and the final model was actually an average ensemble model based upon 2,000 individual models. And these were created by uh, varying the data, with, uh, they were randomly varied within the uncertainty estimates of the paleomagnetic and age data. Uh, and through the modeling, we were able to assign uncertainty estimates. And we did this in two ways. Uh, we had the uncertainty from the Gauss coefficients, but also uh, we could get the standard deviation of the inclination and de declination predicted from the 2,000 different models. And that's predominantly what I'm going to show in the next few slides. But it's important to note that from the 17th century onwards, um, the model is constrained uh, by GUFM, by Jackson. And in the figures here, I've se selected two times, 500 BC and 1000 AD. And we can see the field lines going across the UK. And just to point out uh, the non-dipolar influence of the field here, where we have declination uh, decreasing this way and then declination in this time. Uh, going in the different direction. So uh, in these graphs, I'm showing the new Arch UK 0.1 model or at Meriden, and it's the, the, the blue curve coming through here with the standard deviation estimates uh, in the dash line. And you can see the distribution of the data here, the orange data are the new data, and the open circles are the updated data. Uh, we also included in the modeling um, intensity data, but as part of our re-evaluation of the database, we didn't look at this intensity data. So they're just the data that were already in geometry. And we have very little intensity data compared to directional data. 
So it would be really wonderful in the future to be able to obtain more intensity data from the UK. Um, I hope you can see the curve there. It, it, but, uh, yes, it's swinging around here and doing this through the data in the declination uh, and something a little similar here for the inclination. And just to, to zoom in a little bit, so I've reduced the, the time scale here. Yes, you can see the, the general fit to the data there, but it is quite a scattered uh, data set on the whole. Um, so one nice thing about creating a geomagnetic field model is that you can create what we call model predictions for any location that you like within the UK. So you don't have to relocate things to Meriden if you don't want to you could take the site location. And on this graph, you can see how the field varies at the four, the four different corners uh, from this map here. And you can see that there are slight, dif slight differences in the curves, depending on where you are in the UK. Obviously, intensity and inclination, they're going to change with your, your latitude. And if we bring those down back to Meriden, you can see that there are some amplitude differences which you should be aware of when using um, these curves for doing dating. Um, and the uncertainty brackets here are now the two different types of uncertainty. So the standard deviation on the inclination and declination produced from the 2000 model iterations, but also the larger standard deviation uh, is from the model coefficients themselves. And I just want to, uh, at the end here, compare the new model predictions with some of those previously uh, determined. So uh, the new model is in red here. Um, and we've compared that to the Shah Diff 14K. So that's a 14,000 year model by Pavon Carrasco et al. in 2014. We have the Arch 10K model of uh, Cathy and others. And then the AFN model of Licht et al. in 2013. And we can see that for the most recent periods, the models agree pretty well. But I would note here that the amplitude of our inclination is uh, a little bit less in this uh, swing here. But we do start to see differences as we go back in time, especially around about here between 0 and 1000 BC, where we see some differences between the model, primarily in our case because of uh, more data that we've added here. And we really see although I don't have the data plotted on this graph, that these high frequency variations in the pavon Carrasco model are not really supported by any data from the UK. And I'll just end by comparing our new curve with that of the Clark and Zananiri curve. So the Zananiri in orange and the Clark in gray, and also the GMAT 2K.1 from Lodge and Hong, which was a model developed using regional reference curves. Um, and you can, can again see that the general patterns that we're seeing, especially mm -hmm. through the past 2,000 years or so, are very similar. But in, for example, in the Clark curve, you have these high amplitude swings in inclination. You have quite a different behavior back here, some different curves, different behavior back here as well. Um, so we would propose that it would be good from now on to use our new model for archaeomagnetic dating in the UK because you can select the individual locations of your data to, to make a model, to make a model prediction. It's based upon a much larger data set than previously, um, than previously. And also within the Geomagia uh, interface, I will be adding um, an option for you to output the data through um, Geomagia itself. Okay, so just to summarize, uh, we've made a significant update of UK archaeomagnetic data. Um, there was the significant development of the magnetic moments in the past database, and all of the new data that's gone into GeoMagia 50. And this has resulted in new, uh, 909 new directional pairs uh, for the UK. And this is, well, at the time when I wrote this, this would be the largest for any country, but then uh, there's some work being done here with Shelby and she's looking at um, the US and she tells me it could be many thousands from the US. So if you do have time, go and have a look at her poster as well. Um, 
And our, uh, our new dating curve has uncertainties. Um, and this was developed through the construction of a new temporally continuous geomagnetic field model. And we'll, yes, as I said before, we'll incorporate this model within Geomagia so that you could query the model when you make your query of any UK data. Okay, so thanks very much. As I said, Monica did most of the modeling, and the modeling is not my specialist. I think probably Kathy could take the first question. This is a global model. Yes. No, it's, uh, it's the 14,000 is no, a global model. It's a global model, model that they use uh, for five months. So in previous uh, things, they did European only models where they did the spherical cat um, You, I mean, it doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to make a comparison of thousand programs that can convert the cat harmonics to thousand programs. Um, but then you're comparing something global with something regional on a global scale. You're taking the regional thing and you're taking the global thing and trying to compare it with something that was made from a global data set. So the way in which to make those comparisons is, as uh, I would say, as Maxwell done here, is to make predictions from at various locations and look at the R of X difference. Uh, so that I was wondering, given that your purpose is a, a, a regional model for yeah. data in the UK, Uh, no, we hadn't. We hadn't compared that. I mean, the the, the, the well, Holden Lodge one is is, uh, yeah. is more regional. That's a European one. But I think yeah. so. That gets to the second question. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Factor four. So, uh, so Monica ran uh, many different weighting, yeah. many different weighting regimes, uh, and she ran a number of tests. And four, and what she told me was the most satisfactory from her point of view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to ask you what I, I think is really great about this study is actually the revisiting of the archaeomagnetic archaeological ages, because in 2009 when Fabio was using the British data, there were huge numbers of declination data that had um, um, age uncertainty for 500 years or more. And I, I'm not sure exactly where you started from, I think it's probably with the Zanineri study, which then was already starting to collapse. Yeah, that's partial, yeah. partial Zanineri data in GMAG from yeah. 2015. Yeah, and, and so what happened is that uh, there's a paper, a review paper that Fabio published in 2009 where he makes a plot of what the British declination curve looks like in this period. And it's just a mess if you put the age uncertainties on there. It's then halfway across you know, a thousand year interval. So this is really, a, I mean, it's a lot of work. And it sort of belies what Dennis is saying, puts it in a different context because this is archaeological and archaeomagnetic stuff. But there are cases where you can go back and you can redo the edge. And it makes a huge difference to what the data would be producing. Now, you said the cost about the age constraints, so it sounded like many of these studies were being done for conditions to determine the age from cardiomagnetism. So, where are these refined ages coming from? Are they radiocarbon? Are they archaeo? Are they uh, cultural? Or what, what are yeah, they? Uh, it's com a combination of those. So, for example, if you were an archaeological site, they may say, I think this is broken. And they might be. Give that information to the data people, which has a large data set, 
and then they'll do the, the analysis and then they'll try and pick somewhere on the chart that those people who are more accurate. And we don't use those agents in there, we take the output of the So we get to use the output of the magnetic source. It's not quite a short delivery of the chart. No, we don't use the output of the um, and that's a really important distinction for us to preserve. Yeah, there are no arbitrary magnetic states in the case. Hi. For arbitrary magnetic states, they can be used in the modeling, so they're still going to be done. No, we're going to filter any of the data. We always keep it completely. But there is a cyclical thing that we get. Oh, as part of the modeling algorithm. But I guess it's a bit funny. That's <laughs> 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 there's basically a, a, a data rejection for some input process to like insert uh, some output of And is that information going to be able to be present to be able to reject it? Yes, the, uh, it's explained in the paper how it is going to be rejected. Good. Um, uh, do you think Julie has a question? Oh, uh, perfect. So when you, when you plot the declination and inclination, Most of the variation in the paleomagnetic parameters was quite was quite low, except for a few sites. When I showed sorry, when I showed the mean here, you can see that our alpha nitin is a, a reasonably low. Um, maybe I'm not addressing the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the alpha nitin is here. We had a median of about three, right? So it's not huge uncertainty in the paleomagnetic components. But you can see that up here, that we often have quite a large age uncertainty here. And so it's really important to revisit uh, as many ages as possible with new archaeological information. And, and that is often how our archaeological sites work. Many of them could be active for a long time, and there could be numerous revisions of the ages through time. I have a question. Okay. So back when Fabio was here, he made a huge effort to bring the two databases, Magic and Human Twin, into a core. And now, of course, there are things that are in Magic that are not in Human Gia, things that are in Human Gia that are not in Magic. How, how are we to. This is a fixable problem, but it's not trivial. No. <laughs> No, it's not I mean, Nick and I. philosophies of how the data go in. And, and, and so, how are we going to do this in the future to make sure the data that are in geology <coughs> is a great way to search archaeological data? Uh, but linking the two databases together, we've talked about this for years. And yeah, well, every time we do the data, we have to kind of think about it again. Nick and I spent quite a lot of time going through. I think the archaeomagnetic yeah. stuff is probably quite simple to yeah. bring across. It's the sedimentary ones where you have multiple studies at a single location. Yeah, the sediments are going to be the most. So I think that the archaeological and the volcanic ones. Yeah, that's mostly just making up what the different terminologies are. Yeah. 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 So that's not yeah. the challenge. It's just made it a bit harder. Maybe not interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to make a plot and just without any of the data that had age uncertainty, so it would be greater than 250 years, would it look much more like an observatory, like a, a scatter plot? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't done that. You can do that. It's in your material. Yes. Just wait to point based on the number. Uh, I wondered how it compared with the British aspect of sedimentary records. Sorry, I didn't say that. How does it compare with the uh, British master curve sedimentary records for other mm -hmm. regions? Maybe that. 